And good evening and welcome to another LUA Radio Special Edition. The date is May 7, 2016, about uh, 8.30 Central Standard Time. And uh, we've got a, an interesting uh, little presentation for you uh, uh, this evening. I'm joined again by uh, Kyle Reardon. Uh, how are you doing tonight, Kyle? I'm doing quite well, Shane. Good to hear, good to hear. And his blog is located at uh, thelastbestdeal.com. And we'll get into that uh, uh, here momentarily, but uh, I guess let me just kind of preface this with, with with what was going on. So, uh, for some reason, oh, I, I mirrored. I guess to back up the uh, back up a moment, I mirrored Kyle Rudin's, uh article uh, called "Fake Judges: How and Why uh, Sovereign Citizens Are Undermining Patriot Groups," and this was mirrored on like on April thirtieth. So it's been up there for for about eight days. But for some reason, in the past twenty four hours, it got picked up by some sovereign citizen. And the article has uh, literally blown up. Uh, and uh, with that blowing up has come a lot of uh, pissed off sovereign citizens, to say the least. And uh, uh, <laughs> I think you're, you guys are going to uh, enjoy this for the entertainment value, but there are also some very important things to take away from it uh, as well. Uh, so, Kyle, uh, before we uh, actually before we move forward, uh, why don't you provide uh, the listeners for those who haven't read this article, kind of give them an overview of uh, overview of what you discussed uh, in this article. Well, the sovereign citizens are a bunch of political dissidents who really just misunderstand the government's own laws, but then they go around and proselytize what they think the government's laws mean. And, you know, it's rather interesting. This is unfortunately not anything new for me. Uh, about two years ago, actually two months right before the uh, Bundy, the, the cattle unrustling took place during the Bundy affair in April of 2014, uh, two months prior to that, in February of 2014, I published an article entitled Only on Paper, The Pathetic Story of Commercial Redemption, Free Men on the Land, Sovereign Citizens, Lawful Rebellion, and Community Immunity. And I guess you could say that that was the white paper of why I think the sovereign citizen ideology is horse crap, quite frankly. And for people who are skeptical, which I, I hope they would be, uh, if they go towards the end of that article, I have a list of questions that I would invite any sovereign citizen to answer at all, because unfortunately they like to make a lot of claims about all sorts of things, but uh, you know, I could only debunk it only to a certain point. So uh, yeah, I just, I've, you know, it's been over two years and those questions have not been answered, so I'm still left with the conclusion that their ideology is bogus much like uh, the legitimacy of the uh, established government as it stands. Indeed, indeed. And I did go ahead and pull it up where you were talking, uh, the, the questions that you have. And I was hoping you mentioned that right now because that does come up here, uh, uh, come up in just a, just a few moments. Uh, but first off, I guess, uh, uh, we, Kyle, you and I co-authored co an article uh, titled The uh, Origins of the Harney County Committee of Safety. And th this wasn't, I guess, the origin of, of this, this, fake judge, this fake judge situation. Um, but uh, I guess we'll kind of start there. Um, there was a guy named by the name of uh, Gary Darby. Why don't you tell us a bit about uh, him and uh, what, what he was doing? Well, Gary Darby <laughs> is another fake judge who uh, essentially was able, I, I suppose he was able to con uh, a few of the committee men on the Harney County Committee of Safety up there in Oregon to basically uh, sign a document essentially requesting the, and this was last January, uh, essentially requesting the provost marshal to somehow assist them in stopping the FBI, which doesn't really make too much sense, especially when you consider that Darby's fake oath of judgeship was uh, dated a mere six months prior to the phone call to the provost marshal. So yeah, in, in that article that I co-authored with you, Shane, that was really more just kind of like another detail, uh, kind of, uh, you know, in addition to what was in the earlier article uh, about the fake judges themselves. So, yes, the fake judges are the latest sovereign citizen trend. And, uh, yeah, apparently it's got its own batch of sycophants, unfortunately. Indeed, indeed. And actually, I guess that wasn't like, like I said, that wasn't the first uh, instance of, of fake judges. And but uh, I, uh, the first one was actually uh, Castilla County. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, but why don't you uh, go ahead and uh, just uh, give the listeners a brief uh, recap of uh, or overview of uh, what happened in Castilla County and how the fake judges uh, were involved. Well, essentially the short version. And if people want to learn about what happened in Castilla County, I would suggest they visit 
tinyurl.com slash slvjustus. tinyurl.com slash slvjustus. And essentially what happened was that there was a group of off-grid homesteaders in Costilla County, Colorado in late 2015 who found themselves under uh, besieged by the uh, Costilla County government, as well as some quite literally uh, bigoted Hispanics in the town of San Luis. So they were getting accosted on two fronts. And then there was this third front uh, calling itself Operation Patriot Rally Point, which was a figure headed by Roger Marsh, who uh, two years prior had tried to do some sort of fundraiser involving a RV that eventually burned itself, I suppose. And uh, who knows, maybe it was due to faulty wiring. And uh, essentially what happened was that, uh, yeah, Roger Marsh claimed he had several acres of land in Costilla County, even though he was subsequently arrested on three out-of-state uh, warrants at a motel instead of at his property, which is kind of suspicious uh, right from the get-go. But essentially what he did was that he went, uh, Roger Marsh went to the off-grid homesteaders, SLV Just Us, that was the name of the group, and essentially said, uh, there is a uh, judge who is willing to come here with U.S. Marshals and help you guys out in terms of dealing with the corrupt, tyrannical Acostia County government. And this judge was not an actual judge, it was a fake judge by the name of Bruce Doucette. And so uh, there was a series of meetings to basically get eventually to the point of meeting the judge there was actually called the meet the judge event i believe it was on october 16th of last year near lobato bridge and on the costilla county side of the border and essentially um it turns out that it was a whole sovereign citizen scam uh which is really what it was and that's and that is what broke up the group of the off-grid homesteaders it wasn't the tyrannical uh, Costilla County government. It wasn't even the bigoted Hispanics in the town of San Luis. It was the sovereign citizens who busted up this patriot group. And uh, yeah, apparently that wasn't their uh, wasn't their last time either, because now they're trying to screw around with the Harney County Committee of Safety as well. Yeah, yeah, indeed, well said. Uh, so I guess uh, it, it's kind of curious. So obviously, this like common law grand jury thing has been around since uh, since obviously the obviously I, th I think probably the nineties, uh, if not earlier. And uh, w would you say that like this this new like fake judge thing is just like uh, I don't know like uh, uh, a malignant tumor growing off of the common law grand jury at like uh, the common law grand jury aspect itself, or, or where where is this coming from? Like this seems like a relatively recent. Uh, addition to the uh, sovereign citizens. At least in terms of what's documented, that would seem to be the case, especially when you look at the fake oaths of the fake judges and when they were dated. It's it's all pretty recently, I think pretty much all last year for the most part, at least of the ones that I was able to find. Uh, but you have to keep in mind the sovereign citizens more broadly have this long history of basically trying all these alleged legal remedies which of course don't work acceptance uh, accepted for value a4v does not work i wrote a separate article about that uh, years ago accepted for value doesn't work you know filing the liens doesn't work actually there was a court case called the united states versus marsh where the judge said quote the filing of the lien is the crime <coughs> close quote and uh, because you're you know signing your name to it uh, that's self-incrimination right there. Uh, it's a confession, basically. So filing the lien doesn't work, accept it for value doesn't work. Uh, there's also the more Freeman on the land approach when they seem to be kind of cousins in a sense of uh, f <laughs> uh, issuing bills or filing bills against police officers, and that doesn't work either. And apparently the so-called citizens grand jury thing where they're issuing indictments against evil government agents, well, that doesn't work because the government agents still have their jobs. Uh, they haven't been punished at all, so the sovereign citizens let down, let the patriot movement down about that one too. And uh, quite frankly, you know, the sovereign citizens are a bunch of failures. It is time to call a spade a spade. I tried to do so, uh, you know, two years ago, but apparently it needs to be done again. You know, <laughs> I was willing to let bygones be bygones in one sense, but now. The problem, Shane, is that the sovereign citizens are now actively going around and deliberately subverting 
constitutionalist American patriot groups, and that is intolerable. Again, it's one thing if they want to go risk their own necks and put and walk themselves into jail because they misunderstood the government's own laws, but now it's, and, and also scam people too. They were doing that a while back. Oh, we're going to sell you these 200 300 $400 citizenship kits that, of course, don't do anything. And in fact, a lot of ways get people in trouble with the government. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's one thing. But the new development and why the fake judge trend is so unique, at least as far as I can tell, is now they're deliberately going to other patriot groups and deliberately breaking them up or otherwise manipulating them as is the case with the uh, Harney County Committee of Safety. And um, I'm not going to tolerate that for one second, hence why I wrote the article <coughs> on fake judges. Indeed, indeed. And it, it's also, I, I guess, when you kind of look at the, the virus that, that the sovereign citizen movement is, uh, especially now that now that uh, it's kind of uh, invading the uh, constitutionalist patriot groups too, uh, it's starting to, like I, I've seen this on, on fascist books since the creation of the Citizens for Constitutional Freedom uh, Political Prisoners Archive, I've gotten quite a few friend requests from Patriots, and it's been quite uh, uh, disconcerting to say the least to see some of these uh, Patriots pick up a United States corporation shit. Uh, so it's uh, so it, it's a little worse than that. Well, I, I guess it, I guess it gets worse. Uh, obviously, the infiltration is bad enough, but uh, they're they're convincing these Patriots to believe in falsehoods, Patriot mythology, as uh, you and Gary Hunt, Gary Hunt uh, did a series on. Uh, and I guess there, there's also another aspect of that too, which which kind of uh, I don't know, brings in another factor, another variable, and that's just the the fact that the Patriots don't know their own history. Uh, like, I remember listening to Bill Cooper back in the 90s, and uh, he was covering some of, the, some of these uh, alleged stories. Uh, I think one of them was uh, the Montana Freeman. Maybe it's, that one might not be exactly similar, but, uh, uh, but nonetheless, like, I, I've been familiar with these things since I was, was listening to Bill Cooper. Uh, so, like, the, this, this isn't a new occurrence. It didn't just start happening in the, in the last couple of years, and now it's time that they're like, okay, well, we're finally learning that this stuff doesn't work. The information's been out there. Uh, you mentioned uh, it was a United States versus Marsh. This information's available, but uh, they just, uh, <laughs> uh, the sovereign citizens are ignorant to it. Uh, they misinterpret the law. And uh, unfortunately, I think the Patriots just, uh, I don't know. They don't know their own history, and it's uh, it's it's definitely unfortunate. Well, 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 well. Some of them, to be fair, some of them, you know, kind of gobble it up, and and accept it. And thankfully, there are good American constitutionalist patriots who understand the sovereign citizens are promoting patriot mythology, and they do counter it as best as they can. So <laughs> let's let and also let's be very clear about something. Sovereign citizens are not constitutionalists. They are mutually, these are, these are mutually exclusive types of, um, for lack of a better term, activists. Uh, these are different ideologies. They have absolutely nothing in common with each other. But unfortunately, what you're really looking at is an attempt to, by the sovereign citizens, to, well, Okay, I don't want to bring up that specific example because that would actually be its own episode. But basically, they're trying to absorb and dilute the patriot <clears throat> in much the same way that the Second Amendment Foundation absorbed and diluted, or at least tried to dilute, the Jews for the preservation of firearms ownership. There is, which basically to, uh, let me put it this way, a, a, com a compromising reformist gun owners group trying to compromise a, no, a, a steadfast, no compromise, consistent gun owners, uh, gun, gun owning <clears throat> advocacy group. And a similar thing, too. You have the sovereign citizens, and they're co-opting, is what I'm trying to basically say. They're trying to absorb and dilute the patriot movement so there can be no support for really anything. And here's the worst part, Shane, too. You know, it was, um, I think it was January before last when William Wolf uh, did his lecture up in Montana about committees of safety. The... And I did think I did mention this in the fake judge article. Mm -hmm. The sovereign citizens hijacked that broadcast, and I'm in a position to know because I was aware of <coughs> what was occurring behind the scenes because there was actually supposed to be multiple different live streams by multiple different people. And the reason it was being done that way was so that just in case uh, the federal government tried to pull in any shenanigans that evening, um, even if let's say let's say hypothetically had two of them gone down, three or five or or three or five others would still be uh, broadcasting what Wolf was trying to say, uh, and, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> but that didn't even get around to happening because the uh, Republic for the United States, with a small U, which is a sovereign citizen group, they deliberately hijacked that broadcast, which is why the archive copy 
really the only archive copy I'm aware of that's publicly available of Wolf's lecture. S there seems to be like these sovereign citizens and they're acting like they're hosting it, which is actually not what happened. They co-opted it. So the sovereign, what I'm trying to say is that the sovereign citizen, I've been, I've been trying to co-op patriot groups for at least for well over a year now and probably most pertinently uh, committees of safety specifically whether it be the concept more generally or a specific local committee of safety like the one in Harney County. So the sovereign citizens, what I'm trying to say, Shane, is that the sovereign citizens are essentially trying to do the work of the federal government for them, whether they intend to or not. <laughs> that is actually what is happening for anybody who is not completely ignorant or delusional of what the sovereign citizens are up to. And also one other thing, the sovereign citizens are no friends of liberty at all. If anything, they are the devil's plaything. Mark my words, the sovereign citizens are the devil's plaything. They absolutely are. Indeed, indeed. Um, so I guess let's kind of uh, let's, let's kind of move forward here. Uh, so like, like I mentioned, uh, I, that article of Kyle's kind of uh, blew up here in the past uh, 24 hours. Uh, and there were some uh, interesting comments. I think that they're, they're very, very telling. Uh, because Kyle writes very, he he does a lot of a shit ton of research for these articles. Uh, he leaves no stone unturned. Uh, he follows up every lead, and 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 it just so happens that some of them are extremely long. I think the spoken discourse for this one's like forty seven minutes. So it's it's uh, I think upwards of like twenty. It's probably close to twenty pages if I remember correctly. But uh, so like these are very very thorough articles. He takes his time, and then these people, I, I <laughs> uh, they're definitely intellectually dishonest. I think we we can both agree on that, Kyle. Uh, but uh, they don't try to refute the article. Uh, I, I see a lot of uh, logical fallacies committed uh, in their responses or in their lack of responses. Uh, but we'll get to that here uh, right now so you guys have an idea of, of what sorts of things they're saying. And Kyle, I'll kind of stop after each one of these comments uh, so you can kind of uh, chime in. Uh, the first one from Don with three ends. I'll see you ignorant, educated idiots in the FEMA camps. Uh, so obviously I called out called my logical fallacies. But... Uh, uh, that seems pretty uh, typical for, uh, I guess, any online interaction. Uh, for for a lot of online interactions, that seems to be uh, it's it's attacking the individual rather than 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 their ideas. He, he didn't uh, obviously he didn't try to refute anything he said. Yeah, it, it's not even worth mentioning. Uh, almost, it's it's just like, look, man, if you're not willing to critique what I've written, you are quite literally not worth my time. I have better things to do. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so yeah, the next one, uh, agent provocateur. So Kyle, I guess you're an agent, pro pro uh, agent provocateur, and he calls out, uh, well, sovereign citizens and oxymoron. Uh, well, uh, yeah, obviously, and that's covered in a, in a later comment uh, or in a later uh, reply. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, you have no desire to fix anything about your position in the new world order as spies. Uh, so Kyle, we're a part of the new world order. Well, this is rather interesting because last year I wrote an article entitled <coughs> Chilling Dissent, How Government Demonizes Americans. And one of the many ways that the American police state is put together is that they actually use fake online user accounts. And uh, sometimes they even try to uh, use those accounts to try to harass or otherwise entrap people. So, like... I don't know if that particular user is is genuinely upset at me or uh, he's a fake online user, but the fact of the matter is that it's been documented in the past. So, you know, t the degree to which I'll take some of these uh, criticisms as, as sincere, I think will kind of, <laughs> is based on how, geez, how do I say this nicely? Okay, I won't bother saying it nicely then. How serious the content is of of their criticisms so yeah if they're gonna just verl out invective then I'm just gonna assume they're a fake online user if on yeah. the other hand they are treating the material seriously even if I think they're wrong and even if I disagree with them okay whatever I mean we can agree to disagree too uh, that's part of having a so-called civil society right uh, free speech and all that, right? I, you know, I may not agree with what you have to say, but I will defend with my right. Your, uh, I will defend with my life. Your right to say it. Well, <laughs> you know, I, uh, you know, again, if somebody's willing to address the material, uh, you know, uh, seriously, then I will treat them seriously. But if they're going to hurl out uh, invective and and just spew vile 
it's not even worth dealing with. And as far as I'm concerned, they, they might as well be the agent provocateurs if they're going to accuse me of that. And okay, so we can just point fingers at each other, accuse each other of being government provocateurs. Does that actually accomplish anything? Or is the actual government agents kind of sitting back watching all of this and kind of chuckling because they, cause then now they've, uh, now we're getting all balkanized, right? Um, see, a lot, of, a lot of people still don't understand that, but it's, that's getting to a little bit of a different issue. But yeah, this, the fact of the matter is there are fake online user accounts. So uh, it's a kind of a case-by-case -case basis in terms of whether someone's being sincere or not in their critiques. Yeah, and I noticed something else in this in this comment too. Uh, "Quote: Your days as an agent provocateur are numbered. We're not stupid or afraid, and our numbers are growing." John Darosh, aka John Vitterick, and you will go down as the agents of disinformation and ego tissue. You clearly, are who the hell is John Darosh or? John oh, you mean John or Darosh? You mean? Yeah, John oh, he's, Darosh. I think that's the same guy who is like the main uh, Puba, the figurehead for the National Liberty Alliance (NLA). Who, by the way, I also criticized them in uh, the fake judges article. So apparently, somebody did not actually read. See, Shane, some. You know, oh, that's that. That makes sense. That happens. So, that happens so much. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you get people reply to your article, and it's like, you know, you're wrong about this. This is actually what happened. It's like, hey, bud, look down like three paragraphs. You obviously didn't read it. Now, isn't that interesting, Shane? That's almost uh, I've almost touched upon question. Are people actually reading the articles that they're commenting on? Or are they only reading the headlines? I, I, if I had to posit a guess, they're probably reading the headlines, and then their uh, their emotions kick in. Now, now uh, to be now to be fair, that is speculation. However, I would suggest to the audience that <clears throat> you guys should. I would suggest you guys actually ask yourselves that question. If you see people commenting on anybody's articles, whether you agree or disagree with it, with the content, if if somebody is, you know, obviously mentioning things that contradict what the author said in their own material it kind of begs the question are they only reading the article or are they also reading the uh, or are they only reading the headlines exactly exactly and again, obviously we're, we are both very open to criticism Kyle it's why we have our this way of comments why we have comments turned on in our articles um, we're, we're finding people disagreeing with us uh, so like obviously like uh, I had a comment yesterday on an article and the guy went like lie he went like uh, section by section and pointed out like where he thinks I was wrong. And I was like, okay, he, he at least read the article. I appreciate that, and I'll take the time to actually respond to those. Mm -hmm. uh, so that goes a long way, guys. It goes a long way, and it's really easy to tell uh, who's serious and who's not serious uh, by looking at uh, by the, kind of what Kyle said, if they're, if they're saying things that contradict what the author said. So uh, let's move forward. This is, this is actually a good comment, uh, uh, Mr. Paul Hansen. Uh, I understand what you wrote. I understand why you wrote what you wrote. You just stopped short in one small spot. Judges Anna and Bruce, as new members, compelled a group their direction of judgeships, bills of exchange, and commercial liens. During this process, one of the judges and founding members was arrested and his wife in the performance of these processes. This is where the analyst separates from most other liberty groups. These groups bring a new gospel and they hear one that attracts the people, then preach it out like that per proverbial uh, Pied Piper, but mix in the poison of that fiction, and this can only be considered deliberate when it is repeated with each group they infiltrate. This is not the first time and likely not the last, as they usually hit those that are most desperate. And just for clarification, I'm gonna put this in podcast form too. So if I'm, if I, I'll obviously read out some of these comments uh, for for the uh, uh, for the podcast listeners. Uh, but yeah, I, I appreciate that comment, Kyle. I'm sure you appreciate it too. Like it was a very logical, rational response, and uh, and to and uh, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, if if people are willing to engage in civil discourse again, whether I personally agree or disagree is kind of irrelevant. The issue here is free speech, and free speech does imply freedom of thought. However, if somebody is going to go off on like 20 million different tangents or they're otherwise not going to address the actual mat the material, the content itself, then I kind of have to question their motives. I mean, are they being dis I mean, look guys, I there hell, there was a separate article Shane I wrote uh, called uh, disingenuous activists. I'm sorry, there is such a thing as a disingenuous activist just because somebody regardless of their ideology says, "Hey, look at me, I'm an activist." That doesn't therefore automatically mean they are a good person who wants to change the world for the better or, or whatever. There, are, there is such a thing as a disingenuous activist. I'm sorry. I mean, there is a long history, and if you don't believe me, go read my article by the same name, Disingenuous Activists, Why Leaderless Resistance is Preferable to Formal Organizations. Uh, there is a history that I have written at length about uh, why that is. Um, you know, again, and if you want to look for an example of a government informant, uh, just one example that was in that article, Mark Kessler, he started a 3% BOG, boots on ground. He collected all these people's uh, 
uh, patriots and even militia type guys, uh, uh, you know, personally identifiable information or PII, and then he handed it over to the federal government. Um, so there is such a thing as a dis disingenuous activist, <clears throat> and even if it's not to the degree of a government informant, but it's kind of like what happened when the second, like I said earlier, when the Second Amendment Foundation absorbed and diluted the Jews for the preservation of firearms ownership. And that was all, by the way, that was orchestrated by Alan Gottlieb and, uh, and another individual that was actually on the board of trustees for JPFO. Ooh, board of trustees, just like Free State Project, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, watch out, yeah, watch out for those board of trustees kids, uh, or, you know, they'll screw you hard if given half a chance. But yeah, it's, it's, it's like, look, there are disingenuous activists. I'm just sorry. Like, this is history. Don't get mad at me. Read my article. Yep. And, uh, and, and for uh, the listeners and viewers, uh, all of these links will be in the uh, show description for you YouTubers and uh, obviously in the article, too, and the show notes for, uh, for you listening uh, through your various uh, podcast outlets. Uh, but let's move forward to this next one because this is uh, – Kyle, so I, I guess let me just ask a really basic question. It's going to sound dumb, but you'll, you'll understand. So, like, when, when you write an article, when you put something in quotations – uh, what are you trying? What is like the the common like uh n like uh the common thing that you're trying to denote when you do that? Well, grammatically, <laughs> grammatically, it's it's some it's usually some sort of term or phrase that I don't necessarily agree with or even think is legitimate, but it's what something is called by. <clears throat> so just in terms of putting a label on something. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So so freedom, <laughs> uh, freedom. That's a an interesting name. Uh, for for one of these folks, but uh, sovereign citizen is that like a mandatory volunteering? It got any more logical, well thought out phrases? And Kyle, when when you mention sovereign citizens in your articles, you I, I'm pretty sure you always put in quotation marks. Uh, so that, that and and uh, that's just because that that's what they're known by. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess he uh didn't grasp that. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. He wasn't the only one. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Any, any other thoughts on that one? Again, was he only reading the headline, or did he read the actual damn article? That's a good question. We'll probably never know. Now, if, now, if you keep in mind, in the headline, I didn't put quotes on sovereign citizens. That's true. But does the guy really want to string me up and crucify me just because I didn't put quotes on the term sovereign citizen in the headline, even though I did it throughout the <laughs> article? Come on. Give me a break. Yep. Yep, that is uh, that is true. And then this last comment, obviously, uh, there were a couple other ones that came in, uh, and we'll we'll see this guy's name and one of the threads on Facebook here momentarily. But uh, I, I've I've noticed this with sovereign citizens. I, I I used to be in a sovereign citizen group, and there's still a few that are on my on my fascist book friends list, just because uh, it is kind of funny and it's kind of uh, I guess a, a case study to see like to kind of t t to examine some things to see if they're actually doing. Uh, doing a few of these things, but uh, uh, yeah, they they tend to like copy and paste these really, really, really long. Like uh, they'll post like fifty different court cases with like excerpts and and all of that. They won't provide links for any of them, um, and they won't uh, like they don't they don't have an article written on the subject with the stuff kind of explained uh, in layman's terms. Uh, so th this one's kind of an example of, of that of, of the other two, but the other two were I, I swear if I were if I were to have approved those comments, uh, the page size would have would have probably doubled. Uh, so yeah, just like I guess putting quotations and just uh, I, I I don't know. You can you can go to the article and read this yourself, but I, I'm not going to give it much time, Kyle. Uh, definitely not going to. But just the 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 uh, other instance of. Uh, uh, Bob, since you seem to know something about sovereign citizenship, would you be kind enough to answer the questions that are towards the end of another article at the following link? Um, I'll say fair. Well, <clears throat> Kyle, it's been like two and a half or three years. Like, uh, no, no answers to it. But these guys, these guys are experts. Yeah, I'm still They're experts. I'm still waiting, Shane. Uh, at that the though that list of questions at the end of Oleon paper, I'm still waiting. You know. Look, and look, I'll say this publicly now, if, if I haven't said it before, I just don't remember. If any of you sovereign citizens want to debate me, I would welcome it. I wish the sovereign citizens would publicly debate me about the validity of their ideology. And I mean that sincerely. I'm not joking. I want sovereign citizens to debate me about the validity of their ideology and, yeah, their methodology as well, whether it's accepted for value or filing the liens or pick something. Uh, you know... It's, it's time now to really look at the basis of the claims and also its, its efficacy. Remember, I'm the guy who doesn't like reformism. I wrote that anthology 
uh, last year, an elusive phantom of hope. And I, mm -hmm. I ticked off a whole bunch of people. There was also that informal oh, yeah. debate that, uh, that uh, I was part of with uh, against uh, Mr. Babs about jury nullification. I am not scared of people who have vested special interests who want to sucker good people into wasting large and inordinate amount of time and effort <clears throat> into things that simply just don't work because they're counterproductive. Okay, I'm not afraid Indeed. of these people. And it's about time that there is some serious intellectual honesty and skepticism about what is actually happening here, especially when it comes to the corporate United States myth, as you mentioned briefly earlier. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And uh, LUA is more than happy to uh, host any of those uh, any of those debates. And uh, since you obviously will know my position by the end of this, if you don't already, uh, I'd be fine with bringing in a, a neutral moderator that has no knowledge on the subject whatsoever. We are willing to accommodate, I promise. Uh, <laughs> so let's let's kind of move forward here, and this is Kyle. I I think this is probably going to be another hour and a little another hour presentation here because there's just so much to go through. Uh, uh more material for uh, for the uh, listeners and viewers. I told them there'd be more after I got out of the higher level indoctrination. Uh, and yeah, you're getting it. You're getting it. Uh, <clears throat> so here's the uh, uh the comment thread. So I was trying to track back like where all of these views were coming from. Because until, uh, I'll say, until uh, this morning, there were no comments on it or anything. So I was like, well, this could be getting put out to anybody. Like, this could be center, being sent out page, around Patriot groups, and they might just be sharing, like, hey, beware. Uh, or, as, we, as we're going to find out here in a moment, uh, it was uh, spread around uh, sovereign citizen groups. And uh, so people had some choice things to say about the article. And, uh, again, about Kyle and myself. <laughs> So uh, there's very much uh, uh, a few reasons why we're doing this, and just to, to kind of get this on the record. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to read this entire post by, uh, and this is public, I'm not going to, I'm not worried about this guy's private. He posts on, on damn fascist book, for Christ's sake, uh, and it's being shared around like 25 times. Yeah, it's, you don't have privacy on Facebook. Uh, his name's Jeremy Costley, and he had this uh, long post. Uh, he shared the article, but uh, he didn't really he didn't respond to really anything in the article. He just kind of injected his opinion into it. Uh, so there's no refutation or anything of that matter. Uh, it was uh, uh, yeah, and he called Bruce Doucette. Uh Bruce Doucette has apparently helps him and many others at nothing but a request uh, several times uh, personally. So Bruce Doucette has apparently helped them uh, with some of their uh, some of their legal matters. Uh, and Kyle, I'm, I'm <laughs> maybe maybe it isn't the right time to say this, but uh, I, I I guess ask the question like, how long do you think it'll be until like these people get tossed in prison? Like as is the trend. Well, just to be perfectly clear, I don't want the sovereign citizens, even them, even though many oh, well, of them have scammed course, people over the years. I don't want them. Look, I mean, I'm I look, I mean, I'm a libertarian, right? I don't think vices are crimes, and I don't want really anybody. Uh, who actually hasn't harmed uh, anyone else who has not caused a victim to go to prison, right? I don't want potheads going to prison and, and so forth, right? I'm very much against victimless crimes. Having said that, the sovereign citizens are doing enough foolish things to basically give enough excuse to agents of the state to, you know, fall down on top of them and squish them like a, like a bug. So I think what your question is, is that given that they are basically kind of uh, stick, you know, sticking their head up and kind of taunting Leviathan and not, and not even doing it well, but foolishly doing it, <clears throat> or at least the manner in which they're taunting Leviathan or the state in the manner that they are. Um, I would assume, Shane, that they will stay out of prison only so long as they are successful in busting up patriot groups. And once, they, and once the sovereign citizens have... Uh, <laughs> outlived Fulfilled their, their purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't. Well, okay, I'm not going to go that far. Uh, but I would say once they've uh, lived out their usefulness, <clears throat> they've exceeded their usefulness, or otherwise they're not useful anymore to the government in terms of busting up patriot groups. Then chances are the cops will swoop, swoop in, you know, slap the irons on, and throw them in a paddy wagon. And that's and that's probably the. If I had to, and to be fair, everyone, I am speculating to some degree here. But I would assume from the actual evidence I have uh, blogged about thus far that the reason the sovereign citizens, or at least Bruce Doucette specifically, is still as free as any of us are is, is mainly because he's very useful to them. Fair enough, fair enough. And, and obviously, yeah, obviously, I, I, don't want to give it, I don't want them to get tossed in, uh, in, in prison either. 
Uh, that was just kind of a, a general question. I mean, we, we've seen it enough times. But realistic, we, we, we can, we can, we can. I guess the, <laughs> yeah, we, we, I guess we can. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again. Is, is what I'm saying. But yeah, but realistically speaking, at this point, you know, the clock is ticking. I think it's just kind of obvious. And if it's not going to be one thing, it's going to be another, right? Because the sovereign citizens they push historically too. They push, they push, they push. <laughs> And if it's not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh foolish thing they do, it'll definitely be the eighth, ninth, tenth, or eleventh, right? It's just a matter of time. Indeed, indeed. So let's get into, uh, to, into some of these uh, some of these comments here. Uh, yeah, four people uh, were they they put their little angry face on Facebook, the the down like button. They don't like your article, Kyle. I know you're butthurt. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I guess the the first interesting comment is by a guy named Jeff. Uh, quote, these so-called patriots are either the very same disinfo trolls they speak of or oversimplified, overreacting fools who just don't see how it all fits together. I hate this bullshit demonizing sovereigns. This may as well be a brochure for the Southern Poverty Law Center. Dragging up political prisoners being convicted by whom? The court system is not a real American legal system. There isn't, there isn't one. Anyone who says A4V is not real is, simply does not understand certain facts. This is an educational problem. Some people will never never learn and don't really want to. Uh, oh, man. I know you've got some things to say on that, Kyle, but uh, but first I want to point the listeners in a, in a direction here. Uh, so, <laughs> obviously, there there's a, a, a pro, uh, an archive on the Liberty Under Attack website called uh, Profiling. And you know who has their own page on there? The Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, and uh, just the, the headline, if you take the time to scour these documents, there'll be no doubt in your mind that the SPL is a hate-mongering, fear-mongering scam of a non-profit. Uh, and Kyle, help me put this page together. He'll find some of the documents. And he'll have more to add to that in a moment. But, yeah, we're against the SPLC. Like, that's 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 documented. That's uh, it's, it's on record. Uh, but, uh, Kyle, what do, what do you think? <laughs> Well, this this is just ignorant of my previous work, and I think this is a deliberate attempt at smear job. Uh, like I mentioned in Chilling Descent, the article I mentioned earlier, uh, hell, let me just read a paragraph real quickly from there, where I actually d explicitly mention the not-so-wonderful Southern Poverty Law Center. Quote, unfortunately, it's not just the state that is unjustly profiling dissidents, but also non-governmental organizations as well. The militia watchdog by the ironically titled Anti-Defamation League, who exists only to defame others, and Meet the Patriots by the Southern Poverty Law Center, showcase different enemies lists whose purpose is to illustrate specific examples of their political opposition. Personally, I have zero problems with the whole concept of drafting an enemies list for other reasons, but what I do have a problem with here is the fact that these NGOs are deliberately lying to the government about said dissidents in the blatantly obvious attempt to sick the king's guards, I'm meaning the police, the cops, uh, upon all of them. The SPLC itself is nothing more than a huge scam that was begun by Morris Dees in the admitted attempt to make money by any means possible, as evidenced in part by locals in Montgomery, Alabama, describing the SPLC's headquarters as the Poverty Palace. Interestingly enough, it would seem as if the SPLC only backpedaled with regards to their portrayal of Dr. Ben Carson, albeit half-heartedly. Okay, close quote. So, yeah, so, yeah accusing me of somehow being a, a sycophant of the SPLC directly contradicts what I admitted last year in terms of me being an opponent of the SPLC. So... Somebody apparently, again, are they all, are, <laughs> I hate to say this for the third or fourth time now, are they reading, are these fascist book critics, are they actually reading the articles or are they only reading the headlines? Yeah, I, again, again, good point. And hell, I, actually, I, I forgot about this, but uh, when we were putting there that archive, I just I was going to do a video on the uh, SPLC. Uh, it's about a 50-minute video on the uh, LUA YouTube channel. If you just search uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, Liberty Under Attack on YouTube, you can find it. Uh, yeah, we're both openly against the SPLC. Like, there's no <laughs> there's no question about that. So, yeah, that was just, uh, uh, it was false. It was false. Uh, so we've defunct that, debunked that. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, move forward to this next one. Robert says, quote, There is fraud and misunderstanding. But there is a great amount of case law that is correct, and some theory is correct. This is crap. This well, is crap. 
that was like that was such a, like I don't know if he if he cares so much about like if he cares so much about this cause like I don't don't you think like he'd put more than two senses you like I, even I don't even know. if he were even if he were only to criticize like one thing I wrote then I mean he doesn't I'm, he doesn't have to spend look I mean I know a lot of people are busy they have to you know make a living and take care and the, of those who um, are parents they have to take care of their children etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But if he has constraints on his time and an effort or whatever, he doesn't. There's no requirement anywhere. There's no law that says that he is obliged if he's going to criticize me to go every single point that he can think of. If he's constrained on you know time and effort, he could criticize me on like one or even two things and just be very selective about that. And I would appreciate any sort of criticism, and I would also appreciate a chance for a rebuttal. Of course, because free speech is a two-way street. Of course, a lot of people on fascist book don't really understand that. That, uh, that, and also, let me let me step in before I forget this. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, if like, if it is a time constraint, he doesn't have time to like respond. Like, if he doesn't have time to like spend like, uh, oh, I, I don't know, like, I don't know, twenty minutes skimming the. Or actually, I, I don't even. Yeah, this one, this one's the, this one's longer. Like, if he doesn't have time to skip, skim the article like, in like twenty minutes and provide uh, more of a response than that, he sure as hell hasn't doesn't have enough time to. Uh, uh, become an expert on the sovereign citizen uh, uh, rhetoric uh, in order to like go into court and do these things. Uh, well, yeah, I that's a valid point. <laughs> well, yeah, and and of course, you know, the other kind of problem too is that you know, I hate to pull rank on anybody, but uh, considering and not just this particular commenter, but but a lot of these other guys, like how 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 <laughs> how long and how much effort have they put into the alternative media themselves? I mean, if you go to my blog, you can see that, uh, you know, pretty much more or less starting from January of 2012 was when, uh, you know, it was when I, I really started kind of blogging in earnest. And you can see the archives from that point onward to, to now. So, uh, you know, whether I was criticizing Ron Paul at the time it happened in the 2012 campaign or some other things that were happening, um, like I've been doing this for a while. And that's not counting uh, years going back even further when I was, I did have my own YouTube channel and I did have my own podcast for a couple years and, and so forth. This is just the blog. Okay. So all the, with, you know, these guys with their, um, uh, with their, with their not even critiques, it's, it's really kind of half hearted uh, invective would probably be a better way of putting it. Just uh, vile spewing of, of nonsense. It's like, okay, well, you're not really critic. You're not even really criticizing what I. I mean, because that would that would be to give them too much of a compliment. Because that's kind of assuming that they actually put some serious <laughs> thought and effort, which I wish they would. And I'm not joking. I really wish they would. But they're not bringing. Let me put it this way, Shane. They're not bringing their A game. See, I do, but they don't. And I wish they would. So I mean, we. I would, Shane. I would love not. Sorry, a little bit of a different topic. Let me just mention it just very briefly here. I would love nothing better. Than for people to bring their A game to the alternative media so we can have some serious market competition. I would love that to such a degree. I don't even know if the if if the if the listeners and viewers can even appreciate it to the degree that I would love that so much. But this isn't even that. This is really more of an example of a teachable moment for people who are uh, to excuse me to demonstrate that there are some individuals who are basically just kind of either either lazy or they're disingenuous. And thus, I would kind of submit probably don't even care about liberty or freedom on any real level if they can't even do so much as to really kind of figure out what somebody's article that is at least detailed. I would like to think my stuff is detailed, if not at least oh, half, yeah. done halfway right, uh, to at least uh, approach it seriously, even if you disagree with it. You know, I'm sorry, there has to be a little bit of a give and take here if we're going to have civil discourse, which apparently these guys are not interested in having because I'm assuming they're a bunch of savage brutes and not civilized men. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, your stuff is very detailed. I mean, set like 17 pages, like hell, even uh, even my stuff, uh, like 8 to 10 pages is longer than most of the stuff that goes on out on these big alternative media websites. Typically, it's like a, a 1,500 or 2,000 words. Uh, so yeah, your stuff is very, very detailed. I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone, even those that that disagree with you, hate your fucking guts. I don't think they would disagree with that fact. It is detailed, but they may disagree with the details. Uh, That's so, fine. Uh, and then, and there is nothing preventing them from <coughs> from uh, publishing their own, uh, you know, critiques or rebuttals to my work. And 
And I would love that because that would also give me an opportunity to respond back. And again, it doesn't even have to be in the written form. They can do a video. They can, they can do a podcast. I don't particularly care about the communications medium so much as if they approach the idea seriously instead of just being lazy and, and or disingenuous about it. Indeed, indeed. Uh, let's move forward to, uh, to Greg's uh, comment here. Uh, I'll go. I'll go ahead and read this just so the like for for those who aren't familiar with the sovereigns, like this is like a, a pretty good representation of the rhetoric minus the uh, uh, the appeal to a deity. Uh, quote. Uh, Greg says, "Quote: The municipal corporations, muni corps, gain consent by contract. Most do not know that what that truly means or how it is done. Muni corps are also under the jurisdiction authority of the Vatican's Holy See." Law of the Sea, a.k.a. Admiral, Ad Admiralty Maritime, which declares land to be a vessel at sea. Well, that can be legal, the undoing of Yahweh's law, if, if it is not lawful and they know it. The above folk are of the jurisdiction of the land, not the water. Might be advisable to get that distinction straight. For those standing that there is no difference between the two, you are beyond incorrect. They are as different as the two statuses stated in the 1873 SCOTUS case, U.S. v. Anthony. If it is your intent to be an agent provocateur against those standing for their living status, then the curse of Yeshua be upon you, your household, until you repent. So. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's, one, oh. it's, it's one thing to have religious liberty, but remember, too, there is such a thing as a wall of separation between church and state, as mentioned by third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson, Mr. Declaration of Independence. So the I, th I think you called the appeal to deity. I think you said. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, w the fallacy. Um, no, our liberty. Excuse me, my liberty, your liberty, even his liberty is uh, naturally derived, right? Um, and actually, I mean, it's, that, it's, a, it's inherent. It's, it's inherent. inherent. And without getting too much into argumentation ethics, which is a bit of a different topic, the fact of the matter is that, uh, well, to put it in the words of the framers, it's self-evident. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's no reason to, to go a monotheistic or even polytheistic route and say that uh, because Zeus, because Mercury, because Mars, or because Allah, or, you know, insert your favorite deity here in the brackets, as it were, uh, therefore, you don't, have, you don't need to even touch that. You, ha you know, your freedom is natural, period, end of story. In fact, actually, that's probably – so whether we're talking pre-government, during government, or even hopefully someday post-government, uh, you know, our nat you know your, nat your natural liberty, my natural liberty, the natural liberty of the guy down the street or even the individual in question who was commenting here doesn't change at all. It's there. The only question is does the state respect it or not? Indeed, indeed. And uh, I'm going to skip a few comments there because there's just uh, uh, no substance whatsoever. Uh, but this one, uh, this these three three comments by this guy named Don, he actually, he, we actually read one of his comments on the website. I didn't actually connect that. Uh, so his first comment, quote, first statement in the original post, sovereign citizen, is that not an oxymoron? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's in quotation marks, bud. Uh, anyways, uh, continuing forward to this comment, who fucking wrote this piece of shit bootlicking article? I think we need to expose this website. Seriously, one of you legalese linguists needs to take on this website. Count me in. So, attacks against left under attack website. Fuck you, bud. Yeah, like, uh, like... And a boot bootlicking article? I'm a goddamn anarchist, dude. <laughs> I was about to say, you know... Really? I'm just saying, for the viewer... Oh, man. I, I'm just about to say, like, for the viewers, if you look behind <laughs> Shane, you can see the voluntarist flag, you know? In fact, more... Just a little bit of a side note. There, there's a YouTuber by the handle of Maura Q who's got a great parody song of sorts. It's called Black and Yellow, Libertarian Remix. You know, black and yellow, black and yellow, yeah, great Wiz, song. Yeah, Wiz Khalifa has yes, the remix of that. Yeah. Well, but but yeah, the Libertarian remix is the one by Maura Q. And mm -hmm. yeah, like there's that the black and yellow is referring to the voluntarist flag. So uh, yeah. or at least yeah, the I'm, yeah, I'm an anarchist, but like bootlicking. No, I I, <laughs> I I I don't believe in the concept of authority. There's no boots to lick. <laughs> Oh, that's that's that, yeah. And actually, hold on. Speaking about speaking about anarchism, just for a moment, Shane. I remember, and I will not say his name to protect the guilty. I remember one constitutionalist in a private conversation not too long ago, where he actually thought that 
anarchists are sovereign citizens, which of course is not true. Yeah, and that, yeah, and that's, that's that's a that there was that one I I did I was it oh, shit no it was it was a response that uh, I don't remember I don't even remember what it was my memory's so bad now uh but I I, I it was either me or it was you and I and we did no no it was me it was me uh re, re, uh refuting one of the they tossed in uh libertarian they tossed in uh um libertarians patriots and sovereign citizens into the same like all in this like a uh, nice little handbag hold on do you think that was one of Matt Osborne's articles. Um, I think it, uh, yeah, 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 it was the one. It was something, that, it was also something about firefighters too, and like libertarians are evil. Yes, want, yeah, the, yeah, and he wanted to be taxed more. Yes, there was that one, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was Matt Osborne of, I think it was Unmasked Breitbart, I think was. was yes, that, yeah. that's what, Breitbart Unmasked, yes. He was yeah, also the same guy, he was also the same guy that called Gary Hunt the dean of the patriot movement, so yeah. No, <laughs> not necessarily this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, so, uh, so yeah, Don tagged uh, Bruce Doucette and uh, Anna Von Wright uh, into this uh, into this post, and uh, he says again, "Ah, oh, fuck!" And I'm so sick of people that can't decipher the difference between propaganda and disinformation. I've dealt with it all day. Um, I don't know what. Yeah, no, the I, sovereign citizens actually promote disinformation. I'm sorry, did I not make myself clear enough two years ago? They promote disinformation blatantly, and they still do it, hence the fake judges being just the latest reiteration of that. Oh, Jesus. And then uh, Dottie, uh, Dottie says, uh, Don, I believe you have us confused. It's obvious a Liberty Under Attack article is BS. Uh, it's actually not a Liberty Under Attack article, but uh, yeah, n nonetheless, it's, it is posted there. But uh, BS, uh, BS, that's all she said, no refutation. Uh, Don, well then, how did my replies not get a response for 18 hours? Uh, well, bud, uh, the comments came in this morning. I have to go to work. You know, I have I have a job. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, like I 18 hours. That's really not a bad like res, like a, it's really not a bad like response time. Uh, like to to comments, uh, it's really not. So yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not. Hey, 18 hours and yeah, whatever. Yeah, hey, and speaking for myself, sometimes I won't touch my blog for like you know like days or even weeks at a time like it's okay to go on hiatus like everybody just calm the calm the hell down yeah it was like 18 days i would understand because like that then i would have definitely uh like that I, i'm typically on there every day or every other day so if it goes if it goes for like 18 days then uh yeah there's there's the uh, i i would understand that comment but no 18 hours no piss off piss yeah, off. yeah yeah the other guy um, the other guy the only thing i can think of is like obsessive compulsive much and like he was, <laughs> he was refreshing the page like every two minutes. Like, did he respond? Did he respond? Fanboy, uh -huh. yeah. I, I actually I can't say fanboy, can I? But it's almost like a fanboy, except he doesn't like you. <laughs> well, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's a, a good way of putting it. Let's let's see here. Uh, Michael says, "Am I going to respond to this? Except to say, I'm not even going to respond to this." Hee <laughs> hee. Uh, let's see. Are these uh, guys? We'll but, but again, are these guys? I just want to remind the audience: Are these guys for real? Again, the government runs on record fake online user accounts. So, I mean, I mean, I know there's the term called trolling, but some people who are genuine do do that. So, unfortunately, that's not well, well, t black and white. But t I mean, typically, it, it's not hard to spot trolls. Mm -hmm. It's really not hard to spot trolls. I, 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 I think these like I. I it, Obviously, the the fake user account that that could be possible too, but I don't think I, I don't think this is trolling. Um, but yeah, I don't know that for sure. Let's uh, one of the comments, and I think we need to have a discussion about this, Kyle, because I don't I don't think some people understand their implications. Uh, and obviously, it's collectivist. Uh, all I can say, if the groups don't get it together, we can't move forward as a group. Oh God! Unite now or stand down forever. <laughs> well, okay, okay. So like, what if? Uh, oh God. Okay, no, hold, on, hold on. Let me take this. Yep. Hold on. Let me take yep. this for a second. Take it. Okay. Does did everybody forget what happened to the final four up at the Wild Laugh Refuge in February? Did everybody just forget? Did everybody just forget when David Fry was told by Chris Ann Hall that? And hold on, give me a second. I want to. I want to get this right. It was about, uh, I think he said some of the effect on, and remember, and just for the listeners, if you want to double check me on this, and I wish you would, go to Gavin Siam's YouTube channel and listen to like the four hour like negotiating calls that were, that preceded there, the surrender of the final four up there in Oregon. 
And essentially, there was a moment when David Fry was, uh, was asking Siam and Chris Ann Hall both about, well, what about the promises that were made? And then Chris Ann Hall, to paraphrase, more or less uh, uh, said to, replied to David Fry that, well, your promises were with us, not with the federal government. And literally, you could just hear a pin drop because, and this is my speculation, just to be fair, uh, you know, that's probably when David Fry realized that he had been betrayed big time. And now he's a political prisoner rotting away in a government dungeon because nobody came to save his sorry butt or that of the other three. So in terms of getting our act together or whatever the commenter said, it's like, yeah, well, where were you, lady, when, uh, or fella, when, uh, you know, the final four uh, were, were in a tight spot? Where were you people? You're patriots. You care about the whole public land thing. Well, then why don't you be consistent with what you claim to profess, have an ounce of integrity and a backbone and a spine, and do what needs to be done? But that didn't happen, did it? Nope. Nope. And uh, I, 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 ever since we've come, we came out with the Freedom Umbrella of Direct, direct Action, Kyle, I really despise the, like, the, the where it's like, well, we need to group up in order to like regain our freedom. It's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You can do it by yourself right now. Or, or even, or hold on, just to be fair, or even with just uh, other people kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis, again, leaderless resistance, like I wrote oh, about yeah, it. Oh, yeah, peer-to-peer peer, yeah, peer -peer stuff. Yeah, peer definitely, to, definitely. Well, hell, you know, even James Corbett, well, you know, he's got his videos on, like, the peer-to-peer -peer economy and so forth, which I guess is another, I guess that's another form of leaderless resistance, I suppose. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's the whole uh, assumption, the collectivist assumption you correctly point out, Shane, that, you know, we need a group or groups plural is is beyond stupid. Even, I mean, or excuse me, let me rephrase. It's not very naive. It is very naive. And of course, the sovereign citizens are capitalizing on that by going around, whether individually or using their own groups, because they do both, to go and break up other patriot groups that are not composed of sovereign citizens, whether they be off-grid homesteaders or committees of safety or anything else. Um, so, you know, I mean, like, who is who are actually you know who's actually helping out the uh, the federal government? Who's actually betraying the precious American republic? I think I think the uh, the audience is smart enough to figure it out. I would say so. I would say so. Uh, the next uh, I guess the the next significant thing is uh, Anna von Rice directly responded to your article, Kyle. Oh, wonderful! Because oh. she's one of the fake judges that uh, I mentioned oh, yes. by name, and I found her uh, fake oath and all that. So okay, so what oh, she have yeah. to say? Uh, she said, uh, "quote." These people are so ignorant, they don't know what a common law judge is, much less how they are elected, nor what their office entails. But they're going to find out. We're going to find out, Kyle. That's nice. Sue me, witch. Sue me. <laughs> Drag me into a government court and sue me. Piss off. <laughs> oh, man. So I guess the I guess the next thing at hand uh, would be this this last comment or I guess the, this last comment thread, and uh, then we'll we'll kind of get into the uh, take. We're coming up on an hour here, but I think we can kind of uh, uh, get this uh, uh, wrapped up in the next uh, twenty or twenty or thirty minutes or so. But again, the same post shared by uh, Jeremy Costley. Uh, but I was actually able to respond on Facebook. Apparently, Ken has his posts. Uh, uh, publicly available or or something along those lines where I could actually comment. So, uh, Gene says, uh, this propaganda site compares apples with oranges to prove that oranges are really apples. Free, sovereign, and independent is the only way to go. Don't straddle that fence, folks. Uh, again, another attack on the website. Another attack on the website. You know what we do at Liberty Under Attack and what Kyle does at thelastbastille.com? We, we, we source a shit ton. We give you follow-up information. You can you could research for days, if not weeks, and on Kyle's site probably for like the next twenty years. But, <laughs> but uh, so propaganda site, and these people can't cite anything that they do. But we're the bad guys, Kyle. We're the bad guys. Yeah, I've got more references in any one of my articles than you would see on any Associated Press or Reuters uh, newswire. Never mind the main uh, corporate. Uh, mainstream media outlets that I am directly competing against and I don't have you know uh, whether it's the Koch brothers or any of these uh, fat cat uh, billionaires who made their money not honestly 
but by way of government privilege and graft and corruption, all of that. I am directly competing against all of that, as are many of the other content producers in the alternative media, whether they be bloggers, podcasters, videographers, or others. So, uh, oh, and, and uh, oh, yeah, and I don't charge subscriptions. You can all get it for free, by the way. Uh, you know, all you have to do is click, 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 and uh, and you can get all the material. Um, I don't know what to say, Shane. It's it's just kind of like I mean, at, here's the problem. Anytime you call out a vested special interest for being disingenuous and hypocritical, they're going to accuse you of what they themselves do. They are going to engage in projection. Hence, I mean, yep. hell, there was the earlier one you read about uh, where the one guy called me an agent provocateur. And it's like, okay, well, that's all nice and interesting. Where the hell were you people when SLV Just Us was getting broken up last year, uh, late last year? Where the hell were you people in September and October of last year? Seriously, where were you people? They weren't anywhere to be found. And Alex Ansary, may God bless him, good man, um, he, uh, he described it correctly that the Patriot Movement really dropped the ball on Costia County. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's kind of it. So, you know, oh, yeah, a bunch of these uh, fake grievances about public land or, 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 you know, fake Muslim invasions or these other fake grievances or even the social justice warriors too, right? Everything's racist, everything's sexist, everything's homophobic, even when it's not. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, you know, you've got all these fake judges and disingenuous activists. I mean, it's just lie, 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 lie constantly. And so, yeah, I mean... Just, just, just so that the audience understands, you don't think there's an info war going on here? Oh yeah, yeah, there, there, there definitely is. Uh, uh, the, there definitely is. I want to find out one thing. This might be kind of a digression, but I, I kind of just thought of this, and I think this is like a, obviously the, the best defense against the agent provocateur thing. Uh, look at the goddamn uh, political prisoners archive. Look at the political prisoners archive and how many documents are on there. How much time it takes to actually do that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just kind of tossing that out there. Oh yeah, and and as, and more as a historical note, just what was the when when you and I did, uh, co-wrote the article on the libertarian case for judicial transparency, which explains why the political prisoner archive was was made in the first place. Yeah, where the hell were you people uh, when Charles Dyer was getting railroaded by the government? Where the hell were you people when the manhunt for him happened and he was on the road? And he was being actively hunted by the federal government. Where the hell were you people? And most importantly, why hasn't the, well, I know you know, Shane, but, but for the audience, why hasn't the third, um, the transcript for the third trial been released yet? Why is that? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, go, go, so, go check out the, uh, go check out my article. Uh, uh, oh, shit, I don't remember what it's called. Search Dar Charles Dyer on the, on the LUA website. You'll find it. But yeah, Charles Dyer is, is Charles Dyer is fucked. Uh, and well, it's, uh, not, it's it's not it, obviously it's by the government, but it's uh, it's it's being impeded by uh, it's it's being impeded by uh, uh, people close to him, and then uh, all the Patriot movement hasn't helped them at all. So they've actually hurt him quite a bit. So what I'm trying to sh say here, Shane, is that you know the these disingenuous activists screw over their own people, and it's historical. It's not my opinion. It is histor It's now historical and on record. They just do this over and over and over and over and over again. And either you people will either learn from history or you will be doomed to repeat it. And so far, at least some of them seem to have been doomed to repeat it, hence the latest reiteration of the sovereign citizens being the fake judges. Indeed, indeed. Well, let's, let's go ahead and move forward because this is going to open up an interesting conversation. You mentioned uh, Alex Anstry, and we're going to kind of get to get to that here momentarily. But uh, so I responded to uh, to Jeremy uh, uh, and said, uh, first off, sir, you have not talked to the party that wrote this article, which is you, Kyle, nor with myself, the one that mirrored it. Secondly, Bruce Doucette was involved in dismantling an off-grid homestead group in Castilla County, Colorado last year. Thirdly, there is something in this country known as the wall of separation between church and state. Uh, church and state, a concept that you can thank none other than founding father Thomas Jefferson for. Uh, from now on, I hope that you will, you will be intellectually honest about the facts of this matter rather than coloring it with your own opinion. Good day, mate. So, uh, uh, yeah, kind of like I, kind of like I said, he, he kind of, uh, <laughs> uh, injected his opinion. And then also, I, uh, also a, a little bit of a, an appeal to deity. Uh, and then Jeremy responds, uh, I've talked to several of the NLA members, sir, and Bruce Doucette did not help dismantle the off-graders. He has helped them fight. I'm one of those off-graders, and I'm still here. Your organization did nothing. 
uh, for the awkward people in any way. The few I talked to offered to come and talk, but immediately badmouth others. That's not an impression to make when trying to spread a cause. Uh, you and your organization... You keep saying uh, you and your organization. What What organization? Uh, anyway, you and your organization are just in that in that fiat system like the rest, wanting money. The people you downgrade are having are going personally around trying to personally help people. You uh, personally help people. You, sir, I've not seen in these events. Where you? Where are you? And your organization present in these events around our once great nation. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, he obviously doesn't understand what our websites are about. God, so we're not organizations. We don't. We we aren't like a three percenter. We aren't like the Idaho three inchers or three percenters. I mean, uh, <laughs> or, they, or they or they or the uh, oath breakers, um, uh, oath keepers. Uh, we, we don't, we, we don't go around and help Patriot groups. That's, that's not our task. That's not our task. And it's not one that I want to have, not that I want to, one that I want to have, that I want to do anyways. Yeah. And sorry, something you said reminded me, it kind of jarred something in my mind that actually I, I think is probably an important observation that the audience should at least consider, which is just simply this, because of the sovereign citizens antics historically, and then of course, most recently, they really are balkanizing the minarchists, the patriot, the, the guys who want limited government, basically, the, the constitute, raw, raw, constitution, all that kind of jazz. They basically are balkanizing the patriots against libertarians, especially the market anarchists, like yourself. <clears throat> Just, they are trying to do that to such a degree that, that none of us can actually work together. They're trying, I'm not saying they're successful, I'm saying that's what they're trying to do. When they do, when they act this way towards you, when they act this way towards uh, others, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just it's just balkanized, 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 just over and over and over and over again, and it's really quite appalling. Uh, this is not this is not there is no diplomatic tact here at all. It's 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 really quite uh, childish and infantile, or maybe perhaps more to the point, it's more like uh, high school nonsense. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And and, and obviously, I I, I kind of. Uh... I didn't really associate after after the whole kerfuffle in the sovereign citizen group I was in. I kind of, uh, I guess, uh, expatriated from the patriot group uh, for the most part. And I'm still in contact with a couple, a couple few of them, a select few. But uh, this doesn't uh, like these sorts of things don't make me like uh, uh, doesn't make me jump out of my chair and try to find my nearest militia group. Like it, it, it's, it's really, uh, it, it's really disconcerting. So yeah, you're, you're certainly correct in, in, in regards to, uh, yeah, I mean, hence balkanization and fighting. That's, that's what we're saying. Well, they're alienating. Well, they're sorry, don't mean to interrupt, but they, but they right. are alienating folks who <clears throat> otherwise would have been potential allies. They are deliberately. Un sorry, I mean, this is basically my entire thesis. The fake judges are deliberately undermining the patriot groups and also by extension other types of American dissidents of various ideologies, whether they be libertarians or others, who would have been potential allies, who could have actually helped to achieve what some people would call critical mass. But if you have all of this balkanization, critical mass is impossible. As a side note, I think critical mass is impossible for other reasons. But the point here is that even the attempt to try and get to critical mass is now for certain impossible when you have folks like the sovereign citizens go around and cause all this uh, disruption and stuff. And oh, by the way, even if they don't like me, which they don't, again, prove me wrong, sovereign citizens, prove me wrong. Show me a success anywhere that you guys have had in court. Show me anything. And don't just show me, and don't just show me, upload it to the internet. Show me, I want to see the, I think you probably, Shane, I would assume you would want to see it too. I want to see the paperwork of the sovereign citizens being successful. And I'm not oh, joking. Yeah. I want to see it all. I want to see PDFs. I want to see pictures. Hell, if they can actually get a video camera into the, to the courtrooms, that would also be great too. I mean, Lord knows, I mean, Ian Bernard up in New Hampshire, he's been able to get video cameras in court. Why can't the sovereign citizens? You know, Ian Bernard, he's put up his court documents on the Free Keen blog. Why can't the sovereign citizens? Ian Bernard is doing what the sovereign citizens should have been doing this entire time, but they're not doing that, are they? No, no, they aren't. As you're as you're kind of saying that, I've been scrolling through the political prisoners archive, and this is a long, like there are so many documents. It's not it's not that damn hard, guys. It, it, it's really. Uh... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's really not hard. And sorry, something else just came up, and and I apologize for for the for the listeners and the viewers, but I, I keep kind of I keep thinking of these things. Uh, the some saw one of those uh, in one of those recent comments, some guy said that all we wanted was money or something. Uh, and uh, uh, sir, I would ask you, I would ask you this. 
How many uh, anarchist, uh, I guess, uh, or, or I don't know, I don't like the term organizations, like anarchist uh, groups or uh, like anarchist alternative media outlets? How often, how, like, have you? Can you name an example of when they fucked over their uh, their uh, viewership or their contributors or something along those lines? I can think. Well, I I don't know if necessarily we are change counts as a, as an anarchist group. Uh, no, 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 no. They they were they were conspiracists from day one. Okay, so yeah, that's that's the only one I. They can were think basically of, just but, to be uh, just just be just to be clear for people who may not know the history. We are change uh, is basically, or at least was composed of a bunch of Alex Jones fanboys, and some of the former members have confirmed that to me in in private conversations. So that's kind of how they started. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I mean, there. But I, I know at least a, I, I know of at least a few examples of where us, uh, where sovereign, where I guess maybe they were sovereign citizens, maybe they weren't, maybe they were opportunists and they found a way to make money. But uh, uh, like they, they hold these uh, the panels you mentioned, like the citizenship guide or whatever, whatever the hell it was. Uh, like there are a lot of scams in the sovereign citizen movement. There are a lot of scams. Oh, it's constant. It's constant. It doesn't. It doesn't stop. I mean, like I, so, like I so said, maybe, maybe, maybe there is some projecting there too. <laughs> oh no, no, no. There absolutely is. I'm glad you pointed that out because I mean, like I was mentioning briefly earlier, they have been even since the '90s at least. <clears throat> they were selling like citizenship kits, you know, two hundred, three hundred, five hundred dollar packages. Uh, the commercial redemptionists specifically, which are uh, a version on the theme of that, they really ratchet up. I've seen prices go as high as seven hundred fifty thousand, twelve hundred for like three year memberships to study uniform commercial code. I mean just kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puff stuff, even though UCC is state law, not federal law. But see, the sovereign citizens will never actually tell you the truth about anything because they literally can't afford to do so. Because because otherwise would it be to give up the whole game. Whether they're scamming you in the sense of defrauding you out of your money or they're scamming you in the sense of just believing in patriot mythology either way they just lie 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 constantly in fact if anything uh you know in some ways uh the sovereign citizens uh basically might as well be the government in a lot of ways or a lot of these government agents indeed indeed there was one book that i read when i was a sovereign citizen uh, uh, there's a book called Vultures and Vultures and Eagles Clothing, and and I think uh, Lynn Meredith actually ran. I I know for a fact, uh, she was in prison for like uh, about ten to twenty years. Uh, I don't know if she's still in there now, but it was for like uh, this the same sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, like this isn't uh, this happens quite frequently in the sovereign citizen movement. It happens constantly, as Kyle said. So, uh, I just wanted to bring up that point. Let's get back to to these comments here, unless you have anything more on that point, Kyle. No, no. What else do you have? Okay, uh, so uh, let's move forward here. Uh, Jeremy's uh, uh, viewpoints on Alex Ansari. Uh, Alex is a troll. If anyone disrupted and uh, disrupted what honest people were trying to do, it was him. I offered him shelter protection and many other things until he kept stirring the pot so much I rescinded any offer made to him and, until a public apology was given. His presence in the county raged the townspeople and the off-griders due to the fact that he has no claim in the area and what's, uh, whatsoever... He was here to fuel a fire in his blog, much as a field reporter behind combat lines. He was a sol he was selfish and out for his own story. So yes, in my opinion, he's a manipulative liar. And just, sorry if if this sorry if I'm kind of messing up. He doesn't put comments in his sentences, so I don't know where they start, where they begin. Uh, with that being said, how many of the actual people who have been in this fight from the beginning have you met and talked to? I live in Castilla County. I have for five years, all of which have been off grid and even in a camper. So if you want to direct stories, come get. If you want the direct stories, come get them instead of listening to asshats who have no true interest in the cause. <clears throat> so uh, uh, I responded and said, what precisely was Alex wrong about? Don't you think his videos are an objective record? What happened in Castilla County last year? Um... Alex tried acting like some front agent for the cause to get his video. He's also the one who pissed off the townspeople by speaking racially. He's He linked Bruce to some wacko that no one knew which was dealt with, but he didn't even stay at a meeting to hear what Bruce had to say to, due to a conflict with a nut job, which I would have handled if he had come to me come to me instead of leaving. After the facts, I still offered certain services until enough became enough with his infiltration tactics. He is and will never be part of the Castilla County off-grid movement. We want, we don't want his negativity. By all means, believe what you want. Uh, you want the real skinny? Come, come spend time with the off-grid people. Uh, and I responded, when you say no job, are you referring to Roger Marsh? Uh, yep, dead on. No one knew him. He claimed Bruce contacted him, but it was quite the opposite. Uh, so I guess to, to kind of uh, kind of close out these, these comments here, 
Uh, Bruce Doucette commented, obviously with nothing pertaining to the article or the conversation at hand, uh, which doesn't really surprise me. He just he shared a couple of his posts. Um, then some more sovereign citizen nonsense and... So it's so it's disingenuous, but you know it's interesting the uh, what what you were reading. Well, it sounds to me that Jeremy uh, apparently thinks transparency is a bad thing uh, because I mean he what well, he was making. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think he was mentioning some stuff about uh, <laughs> uh, come down here and learn how off gridders actually are. Or whatever. It's like okay. Well, what, what if I what if I bring a video camera down there? <laughs> like, no, 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 just no. like Ansari did. Hold on, don't even go that far. Why aren't they videotaping it themselves? Think about that. Why is there no Ooh. transparency coming from these people? I mean, Jeremy. Seems... Why, why did that? Why did have to come from an out from an outsider like Ansari? Like, why did he have to do their job for them? Well, but but, but hold on. Don't don't just leave it there. Ansari is out of Costilla County now. Why isn't there any material coming out of Costilla County since Ansari left? I mean, if Jeremy uh, is is saying that everything's fine here, fine, prove it. I mean. Hell, answer he was mentioning about nobody going to the planning commission meetings. Has has Jeremy been going to the planning commission meetings? Is there footage of Jeremy being at the commission meetings? That would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it definitely, uh, definitely would be. Uh, so that that concludes the the comment threads and kind of the I guess the the discourse on, on the article. Uh, and, and obviously the, the comments on it as well. Uh, but this is, this is just insanity. Uh, I, I, as I said, I was in one of these sovereign citizen groups, and I left because of, I, I wouldn't call it balkanization or infighting, but uh, when, when, the leader of your, when, the, when the leader of your group who was like promoting people go into, uh, go, like, try to get tickets, uh, whatever kind of tickets they, they will be, victimless crimes obviously, but uh, go into court, and, uh, like, read four sentences and risk contempt of court. Uh, oh, yeah, and he didn't live in the United States, by the way. He didn't live in the United States. He was promoting, he was promoting United, uh, United States citizens to do this. Uh, so that was, a, that was a big problem for me. I didn't like that at all. Uh, but then just the fact that he, he really didn't, if he didn't have his PowerPoint, he didn't know what the hell he was talking about, about anything, uh, which I think is, uh, which I, I think is, is pretty common in the sovereign citizen movement as we kind of laid out here, Kyle, and then you've done in your, in your previous articles. Uh, so there, there's a lot of problems. That's, that's, that's why I left it. It just kind of got to, it, it kind of came to a T and, uh, yeah, I got frustrated because I, I was, I was at that time, like I was, I was a conspiracist and I was a sovereign, I, I was a sovereign citizen, all that good stuff. Uh, and don't come after me for using the term sovereign citizen. Still in the little, still in the little birdies here, uh, in the quotations. But, uh, yeah, I was a, yeah, I was a sovereign citizen, but, I <laughs> I didn't see it going anywhere. Uh, and obviously I'm glad I never actually got to test, uh, test out the four sentences, but it's just uh, it's a it's bad. It's well, bad. It, it it always ends bad. It always ends bad, man. <laughs> well, these guys have no diplomatic tact. I mean, they have like I mentioned earlier, they have no semblance of trying to keep the peace or even just be nice and courteous to people. I mean, look, it's one thing to disagree with folks, but you know, you you have to have some degree of, especially when it's public. I mean, like private conversations. If you're going to be a rude bastard, it's better to be a rude bastard in private. But this isn't happening privately at all, right? I mean, this is happen This is very public. This is very much a public airing of uh, their dirty laundry, as it were. So mm -hmm. you know, the cat's already out of the bag. And you know, I mean, I, I mean, I mentioned James Babb in passing earlier. Like, I got accused by James Babb of issuing orders to the audience when I was just simply making suggestions about other ways of of, of dealing with the jury nullification uh, issue. Um, and, and similarly here, I guess in one sense, I'm being accused of being an agent provocateur or otherwise a bad person in general or whatever those comments were that you were reading earlier. And it's like, well, look, man, all I can say is this, and I'll say this, you know, one more time. Anytime you step on the toes and call out the vested special interests of folks who want to basically con you into something, uh, you're going to get invective and and spewy vile thrown at you and that's just what it is um mm -hmm. you know i mean they accuse i mean you know i don't want to sound too biblical but they accuse you of what they themselves do there very much is a projection going on and and again and also one other thing too just in the interest of fairness i would ask the audience to not necessarily believe anything i've said tonight what i would suggest they do 
is take what I've said into consideration, read my article, especially the ones that were uh, referenced tonight, and then look at the other side of the story. Actually look at what the sovereign citizens themselves are saying, whether it's about me or or about whomever else that isn't necessarily lapping up, uh, bootlicking the sovereign citizens, to use one of their terms, right? Um, or not bootlicking. And, and then make up your own damn mind as to what you think is honestly happening here. I mean, who knows? I mean, hypothetically, I guess we could both be in the wrong for mentioning about this publicly. I personally don't think so. I think it is important to call out hypocrisy and disingenuous crap when it occurs, especially when it's already been uh, done publicly, and especially when it increases the danger of more people becoming political prisoners, which the sovereign citizens have a history of doing. Indeed, indeed, and the first sign of brainwashing is the inability to hear out the other, uh, the inability to hear out the other side, or uh, uh, go look at the material from the other side. Uh, and as I said, I was in a sovereign citizen group, so I lived that uh, for about six months. Kyle uh, has quite a few articles out on the subject. He's definitely researched the other side. Um, but I, I kind of see this this tendency that when people kind of it, people really like the, like the magic bullet solutions, like well, if we just do set if we set up the common law grand juries. Uh, then we'll restore. Like that's all, that's all we'll take to restore the constitution. Except that it's never uh, worked. That's it. No, it, it it definitely hasn't. And that's that's not just for the just for the sovereign citizens either. But but nonetheless, that um, it's the, the, the I guess the <laughs> uh, if if winning back freedom was easy, folks, we don't we yeah we we'd already we or I guess uh, I don't know if I want to word it that way. If if I guess if restoring the constitution was that easy then the Constitution would have already been restored by now. <laughs> yeah, and again, the last thing I'll, I'll say for tonight is that, look, I mean, if, if anybody listening is a sovereign citizen or likes them or is a sycophant or what have you, look, all you have to do is, you know, answer any of my questions that was mentioned in the Only on Paper article, um, or, or at least otherwise, uh, put up the court documents or whatever evidence that you have proving that the methods of the sovereign citizens work, whether it's the filing liens, whether accepted for value, the citizens grand juries, the wonderfulness of the fake judges, or whatever else. Just don't necessarily swallow anything I have to say. If you think, honestly, to the audience, if you honestly think the sovereign citizen is a good way to secure liberty, then prove it. Prove me wrong. Yep. Yep, uh, and it's uh, it's not hard to put up court documents, folks. I put up about seventy, uh, of, uh, about four days ago. So, uh, yeah, it's not that difficult. It's still definitely not that difficult. The power of the internet is at your fingertips. Use it. Uh, so I, I guess uh, any any uh, closing thoughts for the listeners, uh, Kyle? Yeah, it's time for the sovereign citizens and their ilk to put up or shut up. I'm tired of this crap. There is there are other things that need to be done and should or at least should be considered and thankfully there are moves to do other things whether it's uh <laughs> whether it involves actually uh off-grid homesteading whether it involves uh, 3d printing whether it involves any sort of any other methods that are listed on the freedom umbrella of direct action i mean there are options available to everyone that uh, don't require subjugation before those who falsely imagine themselves to be our rulers uh, there are things that can be done right now. You don't have to ask permission or, or anything like that. And it's just kind of sad that uh, there are some people who believe that they can engage in all of these false legal remedies when, in fact, there actually are legal remedies that work that I've done myself, one of which being canceling my voter registration that I did three years ago. But, of course, uh, yeah, the sovereign citizens don't like it when I mention about a successful legal remedy that I actually proved worked. Who knew? No, definitely, definitely not. And I'll go ahead and point the uh, the podcast listeners in the direction of that uh, tinyurl dot com forward slash cancel voter. I've done the work for you. Uh, I've actually gone through all of uh, the administrative and statutory code, and I found uh, thirty nine states illegal citations tell you exactly what you need to do. Uh, there's no interpreting of it. It says right there, and then just uh, just black and white legalese. Uh, so uh, if you go to tinyurl dot com forward slash cancel voter, you can uh, uh, cancel your voter reg voter registration in your state. Uh, and I definitely recommend that. And if you if you if you do it in any state other than Indiana, Illinois, or Texas, uh, please send us proof uh, uh, so we can uh, prove that it works in all 50 states. Uh, we proved it to be successful in three thus far. I'd also like to point you in the direction of real solutions uh, uh, without subjugating yourselves uh, before those who uh, claim to be our rulers. Uh, that is uh, the the freedom umbrella of direct action, as Kyle was kind of referring to. Uh, that is tinyurl.com forward slash freedom umbrella two. 
Again, tinyurl.com forward slash Freedom Umbrella 2. And I'll have that linked in there, too. There's going to be a link pack uh, show notes and uh, for the uh, YouTube description as well. Uh, but it is necessary. Uh, it's time to uh, put away childish things. And uh, the sovereign citizens, uh, uh, yeah, that's definitely something that needs to be kind of, uh, uh, either needs to be proven or it just needs to be uh, discarded and onto uh, more successful uh, strategies and tactics. Uh, so with that said, Kyle, thank you so much for uh, joining me. I know this is a little longer than we, we thought it would, but uh, I definitely appreciate your time, uh, although I do think it was uh, it was definitely valuable. Oh, appreciate it. Not a problem, not a problem. Uh, and I'll go ahead and mention this too. This, the screenshots of the conversation that we were kind of reading from, I will put up the zip file of that uh, in the show notes as well so you can go actually read the conversations. We can't make this shit up, guys. We really can't. <laughs> so uh, with that said, we hope you enjoyed this LUA Radio special edition. Uh, second one this uh, second one this week, actually. I wasn't lying when I said there would be more content after I got out of, uh, on, uh, out of uh, higher indoctrination. Uh, so, uh, if you did enjoy this, please consider, please consider contributing financially. Uh, this content isn't free and it takes a lot of time. Uh, so if you do see value in it, uh, let's have a, a voluntary exchange. Uh, and, uh, you can, uh, contribute via PayPal. That's paypal.me forward slash LUA radio for a one-time donation. Uh, or you can go to libertyunderattack.com to sign up for a monthly PayPal contribution, uh, or to make a, or to chip in some Bitcoin. Uh, just go to the website libertyunderattack.com and you'll see all those options on the sidebar. Uh, I am actually kind of starting something else here. Uh, any donation over $10 uh, or anyone that signs up for a monthly contribution of any amount uh, will receive a free LUA QZ. I've got about 15 left. Uh, and I'll probably send you some other goodies as well. I'm not quite sure what those will be, but if I'm going to ship a, ship something to you, I'll give you some other goodies too. Uh, also make sure to find us on Patreon. Again, that link is tinyurl.com forward slash LUA Patreon. Uh, Patreon is spelled P as in Paul, A, T as in Tom. R-E-O-N as in Nancy, tinyurl.com forward slash L-U-A Patreon. Uh, I love support of any kind, obviously, at whatever dollar amount, but uh, monthly contributions are even better uh, so I can gauge how much money I have to work with each month. Uh, and for anyone who has a family and who budgets, uh, you can definitely, uh, definitely understand that aspect. Uh, so whether it's $1, $5, or $100 per month, uh, please consider supporting us through Patreon. Uh, and get rewarded in the process. I'll send out some uh, some free stuff there as well as well some other uh, some other uh, interesting uh, rewards that you can uh, you can get through there. Uh, and if we uh, reach our goals, we will be expanding to two live broadcasts a week. Uh, we are doing one live broadcast and a couple of supplemental things throughout the week. Uh, but we want to do two live broad broadcasts so we can uh, interact with you uh, live. Uh, and uh, also uh, for the uh, for the other goal. Uh, I'll get a bulk purchase of merchandise uh, so that uh, we can uh, so I can get make that cheaper for you and you can start uh, repping some uh, Liberty Under Attack in your tax form. Uh, again, that link is tinyurl.com forward slash LUA Patreon. And uh, we mentioned Alex Ansari uh, tonight uh, when we were discussing uh, the sovereign citizens. Uh, he will actually be on Liberty Under Attack Radio on May 8th. Uh, that is uh, tomorrow, uh, May 8th, 2016. Uh, at fprnradio.com uh, at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, so definitely make sure to uh, come check that out. Uh, we'll definitely be discussing uh, his uh, living in an RV for for, uh, for over a year. And hell, who knows? Maybe we'll get into Castilla County too. You can hear from uh, you can hear from him himself. So uh, make sure to check out the website libertyunderattack.com uh, for all of our new content. And find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Tumblr, and Google Plus. As Ludwig von Mises said, "Liberty is always freedom." from the government. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.